Welcome to r slash legal advice where we read surprisingly interesting stories that don't end in a cliffhanger. I promise. If you are new around here, please feel free to subscribe to join our awesome community and without any further ado, let's dive right in. They are taking my child. Hello legal redditors, I need help and I don't have a lot of hope. On Sunday afternoon, my wife suddenly passed away from congenital heart failure. She was 29, she has an 11 year old daughter. Her daughter's father and her were married a short bit, but then divorced. With my wife's passing, they said they would not have me disappear, but that is not the message I have received from them. I've been texting my stepdaughter on the phone, I pay for messages of love. Love you kiddo. And last night I was told to stop texting her and I can have this phone back. They had split custody 50-50 with not really an amicable communication structure. In the state of Kentucky, are there any laws or guidances for the step parent? My wife had no will written out, anything that might give me reason or hope to step foot in a courtroom. They are going to take my little girl away from me. The little girl I have helped raise since she was in diapers. I have just lost my wife and I cannot lose her too. And a user in the comments said, step parent custody is a thing although I cannot speak specifically for Kentucky. It will be an uphill battle and the legal fees may be more than you can handle for something that is far from a sure thing. The only thing you can do is consult a family law lawyer in your area. Good luck. Update, they are taking my child. So I figured it would be appropriate to do a follow up post since my original message had so much support and love. I have not heard from my kids since the service for my wife. I spoke with my family attorney and he said that the state of Kentucky passed laws a few years ago that essentially reinforced the concept that the step parent has no laws, rules, policies or anything at all in the family dynamic. So I am effed. We have tried to be amicable to the father. I have called, texted, no answer and no response. He came by the day after the service to get her school bag, a pair of shoes and a doll her mother got her. And since that point, no contact. I am going to keep trying, reaching out to the various family members on his side, trying to get him to even pick up the phone, let alone talk to me. As for the legacy of my wife, I am taking what remains of the life insurance policy after the payout for the service and putting it into my kid's college account. Anything left in my wife's checking account is going to be a custodial account for my kid so that when she turns 16 or 17 and starts looking at a car, she has a down payment for something that is safe. And then we just endure. Thanks to everyone that gave me a sense of hope, your well wishes and any attempts at trying to help me through this horrible time. My old boss is withholding last paychecks until I come in for an exit interview. So last week I just up and left my job. I am a subcontractor for a small plumbing company in western Michigan. Essentially, we are subcontracted to do jobs for this company, but they treat us like we are actual employees. We never signed any forms when we were hired in, besides a form telling us if we lost our gas cards to pay for gas in our vans, we would have to pay a fee. That's it, technically we are not actual employees for this company, seeing how we don't get insurance, vacation time or anything like that. This is a shady company that does shady work. They partake in numerous illegal activities that pertain to plumbing laws here in Michigan and these people would take from your paycheck if you so much as inconvenience them or if they had to send you back out to a job site again, they would not pay you and take more money from your paycheck. We would work 80 plus hour weeks and still be expected to take no time off or they would take more money out of your paychecks. This morning my old boss texted me telling me that I would need to come in and do an exit interview in order to receive my final few paychecks, otherwise they are not going to pay them to me at all. This is 3 weeks worth of work that they are going to withhold from me and I honestly don't know what to do. These are terrible people who I don't want to ever see again. Any help or advice would be greatly appreciated. And reddit user 1211 in the comments mentioned, you don't have to play games for your paycheck. You can file a wage claim with the Michigan Department of Licensing and Regulatory Affairs. 
Guys, has it ever happened to you that your boss was not willing to give you the paycheck? You know, I'm often surprised when I watch Gordon Ramsay cooking restaurant shows where he is showing absolutely awful hotels and restaurants. And oftentimes you can see that the boss is not willing to pay the staff on time. And I'm always thinking, how the F is this legal and why don't they get in trouble? Update, my boss won't pay after I left my job. So I would like to thank everyone that gave me advice on how to help. It helped ease my mind greatly. Now on to the details. Following what everyone suggested, I went to LARA, Licensing and Regulatory Affairs, and reported my old place of employment for not paying me around a month worth of checks after I left. I tried one last time to get my money from my old boss. When I asked him why he would not give it to me, he said, and I quote, you f me over, now I'm going to f you over. That royally pissed me off. I felt hopeless when I read that, knowing someone intentionally was hurting my personal funds because I left his company. A shame, but that is when I found out I was still a part of their email system. Now, I know this sounds bad, but they kept payroll on the email and I was looking to see if they were even planning in paying, even though Lara was just about to begin investigating. By the way guys, just to quickly chime in, how do you pronounce the name Lara? Sometimes I've heard Americans pronounce it Laura, which definitely sounds weird to a European, to be honest. Anyway, this is when I heard from the IRS saying I was misclassified as a subcontractor when I was really supposed to be a W-2 employee. I found my records in the email and sure enough, I signed a W-2 when I started. Essentially, the investigation ended up concluding and my old boss has to pay Lara back along with some hefty fines. His shop is actually set to close in a matter of weeks. Karma is a B-I-T-C-H. Don't you just love it when r slash legal advice and pro revenge come together? And by the way, if you have watched until here, please don't forget to post some star emojis in the comments and also like the video if you want to support me. Thank you very much in advance. The next one is titled, Iowa City threatening a lawsuit to get me to take down a website criticizing town odors. About four years ago, a large rendering plant purchased a factory in our small town in Iowa that has been causing all kinds of terrible odors ever since. We are talking rotten blood, dead animal, old beer fumes hanging in the air multiple days of the week for years. The smells are particularly nasty on warm and humid summer days. After living directly across the street from the plant, I decided to use my skills as a developer to create a website criticizing the government of our town and the city council specifically for taking no action and letting the factory pollute our town. At the bottom of the website, in the footer, I left a blurb that says, X town is still being polluted as of this date. After a couple of years of the site being up with little attention, I get a sudden spike of traffic, around 2k visitors over a few days. And we finally start hearing from the city that they will be taking action. First, the city council holds a town hall and asks for everybody's complaints regarding the rendering plant and smells. They also print the name and phone number of the city attorney and ask callers to forward their complaints there. After that, they begin issuing fines to the plant, which they disregard and as far as I am aware, never pay. Eventually, the city sues the rendering plant and the rendering plant counter sues. I have updated my website after each development takes place. The last piece of news to come out of this whole situation was that each side had decided to drop their lawsuit around July of 2017, but with no agreement about the order. I did not update the website to mention that the lawsuit had been dropped, it slipped my mind after reading it. The domain name is along the lines of townx is a good place to live.com and the first thing you see on the website is a big yellow block with huge text saying not yet. It used to say no before the city started finding the rendering plant. Everything has been quiet for months now regarding this website and the odor. While the city dropped their lawsuit and I still consider the issue unresolved, the smelly days only spring up once or twice a month now. However, this afternoon I received a letter from a law firm representing the city. It contains screenshots of my website and screenshots of the GitHub repository proving that I am the owner. The gist of the letter says, 
Our firm represents the city of X town, you're the author and domain name owner of the website. We have attached proof. You were understandably frustrated by the issues with rendering plant, which have been alleviated through litigation. However, you have not modified your website despite the progress made. In fact, you re-registered the domain name in 2017 rather than take it down. I had the domain set to auto-renew. To make matters worse, the website contains a recital that the town is still being polluted as of the date someone views the website. This leaves the impression that the information on the site is current. I am reliably informed that the clinic lost a physician prospect who read your website. At present, the website libels the city of X town, interferes with recruitment of businesses and new residents and negatively affects property values. That interference is likely your intention since you took the time to re-register the domain name. I am writing to ask you to take down your site and not replace it with other derogatory material. If the website is not taken down within 10 days, your next notice will be in the form of a lawsuit. I am inclined to disregard this letter as my admittedly naive understanding of the law says the first amendment to the US constitution was created so citizens can criticize the government without fear of retribution. However, I realized there is a difference between federal, state and municipal governments and I will be the first to admit there is a little bit of pride and defiance clouding my judgment too. Nobody is being disparaged on the website except for the city council as a whole. The only person's name mentioned is the name of the city attorney and their phone number encouraging citizens to call and voice their complaints about the smells. The attorney and their phone number were being printed in local newspapers asking readers to do the same. I do mention the name of the rendering plant with a picture of their factory but the letter I received is from attorneys representing the city not the business. I have scheduled a consultation with a lawyer but is it a good idea to leave this site up and risk a lawsuit? Edit, I saw the lawyer this morning who agreed that it seems like this would be violating my first amendment rights and that it is not possible to libel or defame a city. However, he was unable to take the case as he is a real estate lawyer which I knew going in but my choice for law offices in town was the one I saw this morning or the one that sent the letter yesterday. He did give me four good recommendations for lawyers outside of town and specifically outside of my town's sphere of influence. I have got an appointment with one of these lawyers on Tuesday morning and I've also contacted the ACLU location in Iowa as a few others have suggested. All in all, I'm feeling pretty confident that this letter is just an attempt at scaring me into taking the website down though I worry that I am slowly running out of the 10 days time they have given me to comply. Malaki in the comments says, without seeing the website, and no I will not review it, the government sure as crap cannot censor your, presumably, factual website. Nor can a private business. They can try to sue and that can be costly, but they will lose. Guys I'm curious to hear, what would you have done if you were in OP's shoes? I mean honestly I'm not an American but what is happening here definitely sounds like it goes against the first amendment and as far as I know you Americans take your amendments very seriously. No matter which state you are from. But correct me if I'm wrong. And now we are going to read the update to the lawsuit story from just now. A few months ago I posted here asking for advice after the city council of the town I live in sent a letter demanding that I take down a website critical of them or else they would sue. Most of the comments I received confirmed that yes, this was violating my first amendment rights and yes, I should seek a lawyer. So I did. I set up a meeting with one of the two law firms here in the town, the other law firm is the one that sent the letter and he agreed with what everybody else had been telling me. However, he declined to represent me as he is largely a real estate attorney and recommended I speak with someone outside the city's little sphere of influence. Skipping over unnecessary details, I met with the other lawyer but was not able to afford representation at the time. I updated my website to be more fair to the city itself but risked leaving in a few barbs toward the city council and the lawyers representing them borrowing a few reddit comments about squander taxpayer money on spurious advice and pointless legal services. Once I updated the website and the city realized I was not going to take it down, a different attorney from the city's law firm contacted me and wanted to chat over coffee. 
I went, although now I realize I probably should not have done so, he was very friendly, telling me he thinks the whole situation had been badly handled, but he made it clear that he thought I should take down the website, because it was hurting the town, and we both want what's best for it. He also told me there was a reporter from a newspaper calling around trying to get in touch with me and he did not think I should talk to them again because it would damage the town. I declined the interview because I was afraid I would get sued, whether justified or not, if I said something the city did not like. Of course, I was too naive to realize that the city themselves would have no problem talking to the reporter, so she ran her story and I was made out to be the bad guy troublemaker by the city officials she interviewed. What's more, a city councilman, the mayor and the city administrator all denied sending a letter to me. They were also quoted as saying, there may be legal stuff coming down the road. A few weeks later, I received another letter from the law firm and this one was weird. It was the attorney from the original letter writing on his own time to explain all the reasons he thinks he can sue me, citing several Iowa judicial cases and going on about disparaging property. He told me I was making a stupid argument and attributing unfounded legal arguments to him. The letter ended by saying it was not a threat of litigation and not intended to deter me from exercising my legal rights. This was around mid-January 2018, I received the first letter mid-December 2017, everything was quiet once again for two more weeks until I got an email from the legal director at the ACLU of Iowa. On the advice of Reddit, I had emailed both the ACLU and the EFF, but after over a month with no response, I had figured they were too busy to look at my case. I was very happy when she contacted me and wanted to talk. I spoke with the director and, long story short, she thought what the city was doing to me was an egregious violation of my civil rights and the ACLU of Iowa wanted to represent me in a lawsuit against the city. Toward the end of February, we filed suit in federal court and by March 29th we settled the case after the city agreed to these five terms. First, they had to agree to a permanent injunction where they cannot threaten to sue me or actually sue me for any website or content I produce regarding the town. Second, they must pay legal damages to me. Third, they must pay attorney fees to the ACLU. Fourth, they must write an apology letter to me. And number five, my favorite part, the city's staff and its attorneys must take First Amendment training. All in all, I am incredibly impressed with the ACLU's work on this case. I know it's not typical to file a lawsuit and win a month later, but I think just shows how blatant their attempts to censor me were. I am super grateful to the ACLU for helping me with this, because as I said above, I would not have been able to afford an attorney and the city would have gotten away with their threat. I am also grateful to r slash legal advice for encouraging me to contact the ACLU. Thank you for all the help. And guys, let's be honest now, these legal advice stories turn into insane revenge stories. I don't know how you feel about them, but for me, this is pretty much better than pro revenge. Also, by the way, I'm curious, have you ever gotten into trouble for exercising your First Amendment rights? I mean, to be honest with you, I always hear plenty of people say that the First Amendment in the US goes way further than in other countries and in some cases I would incline to agree. Let me know what you think about the current state of the First Amendment in America in the comments if you wish. And the last one is titled, Arizona, our neighbor's dog was poisoned, police want to look through our internet history, a very nebulous term. Wife says we should let them because we have nothing to hide. I say absolutely not. How should we proceed? I guess some background is in order here. Earlier this year, a new set of neighbors moved in and they brought with them three very loud dogs who they let bark and bay 24 hours a day. We were the first people to go talk with them and they got better for maybe 20 minutes and they just let the dogs back outside to continue on. Our city has a policy where noise complaints can be made to animal control, so we did that, which did nothing. The next step was to go to a city-sponsored mediation, at which point the dog's owners agreed to keep them inside. They did this for maybe three days and then we were back to square one. The next step is to take them before a judge who gave them a pretty hefty fine with the admonition to take care of the problem. This all took about 10 months with literally only a day's total of these dogs not barking. 
So they were quiet for about a month after the court date, but slowly and surely they started barking again at all hours. We tried to go over and speak to them, but this time they very clearly insinuated that barking dogs were their right and we needed to get the F off their property. So we decided the only way was to start the process over with animal control as well as contacting our own lawyer to see about taking them to civil court. We have yet to contact the lawyer. We had made the initial report to animal control last Thursday when we got a knock on our door and it was a uniformed police officer who said something like, do you have any anti-freeze? I was really taken aback and I think I asked, I think so, do you need some? He then spoke something into the walkie talkie on his epaulet and asked if he could come. I literally had no idea what was going on and then he explained that one of the neighbor's dogs had been poisoned and asked if we knew them. I explained that I actually did not know who he was talking about, the other two dogs had not stopped barking after the other dog died and I really have no way of knowing which dog is which. He said it was this family and said that they had told him we had a history of being cruel to his dogs. I got out the whole file folder, including my logs, talking to the neighbors, the calls to animal control, my copy of the letters, mediation agreement and judge's order, as well as written down links to the YouTube channel we created in order to document the barking via audio. The officer then asked if he could take everything. I said I was not comfortable with that, but I would be happy to make copies today at work and drop them off at the local substation. I did exactly this. I was met by a uniformed supervisor who said that he would like to send a specialist over to our house and look through our internet history to see what we have been looking up. Again, I was taken completely aback and said that I'm not sure what he would be looking for. He told me that was up to them to decide what they would be looking for. It took me a second but I asked him to better define specialist and internet history and he said that at this time he could not do that for me. I asked him if somehow we were suspects and he said, if I remember, not yet. I asked him if I could leave, he said yes and again asked if his specialist could come over tonight. I said I would really rather not but I would get back in touch with him, he gave me his card and we said goodbye. I just got home and told my wife, my wife insists that we invite him over right now to have them look through our computer, we have nothing on there that would tie us to any sort of dog death, but I feel it is insane to just let the police look through the nebulous internet history without them being very specific as to who is doing and what they are looking for. She thinks that by not letting them we are making ourselves look very guilty. I say we are not guilty because we are not freaking guilty and it's their job to find out who really did it. It sucks those people's dog died but we have followed the letter of the law and have been exceedingly patient even though our once quiet house has been miserable for almost a year. I'm actually really annoyed that our willingness to play by the rules seemed to highlight us. Thank you very much for any advice. To me that sounds like a classic BS guilty until proven innocent story because honestly guys come on would you let the police just look through your internet history without them having any evidence that you even committed a crime? Also this whole let them look through the history because we have nothing to hide and yeah in my opinion of course it's true maybe you have nothing to hide but you also give up your privacy which definitely shouldn't happen if you are innocent in a democracy like America. Feel free to tell me what you think about that in the comments. And the last one is the update to the dog story from before. I took the advice of 99% of the posters and did not call the officer back on Monday. I also showed my wife this threat and she was pretty convinced so thank you for all the rational responses. I called a criminal defense attorney first thing yesterday morning. He was very cool and said that he did not want to waste our time any money because the chances of the DA actually pursuing this were slim to none. He did tell me to not answer any more questions and if the police did come for me again I could refer them to him or if god forbid they arrested me he gave me the number of his answering service. He said that he had a good friend who worked as detective and he would try to put a call in to figure out off the record what was really going on. So basically nothing happened yesterday, of course the other dogs are still barking even as I typed this but I just heard Wednesday morning from the attorney. And basically he had talked to his detective friend who looked into it. Basically regardless of what the neighbors say there is actually zero evidence of them owning three dogs. 
In fact, the best evidence that the now dead dog ever existed were my calls to animal control, the mediation records and the judge's ruling. The people could not provide any pictures, social media posts, any shot records, vet bills or purchase receipts for any of the dogs, let alone one that died. They also had not done any sort of medical exam to prove the dog had been poisoned and they immediately buried the dog in the desert when they found it dead. For all I know, they buried the dog instead of taking to the vet, they are the trashiest people I have ever encountered. They cannot even really remember where they buried it or don't want to say, so with almost no evidence of the dog ever existing, let alone being poisoned, we should not hear from the police again. So our complaint to animal control from last Thursday is still on the books. The lawyer is going to refer us to a civil attorney who he thinks will take our case to bring a civil suit against the dog owners. Our city and county ordinances very clearly state that dogs cannot bark for more than 50 minutes a day and you have the right to an expectation of quiet in your own home. The criminal lawyer does not know how successful we will be, but he does think that maybe the threat of a lawsuit will get them to address the barking problem. Because it would be easier to them to just bring the dogs inside as opposed to a court case which they stand a chance of losing. And guys I'm sure many of my ripe stars are dog owners, so what would you guys do if someone poisoned your dog? As you might know, I'm not the biggest dog friend, but still, if someone poisoned my animal, well, let's say it like this, the things I would do I would rather not say on YouTube. Let me know how it would be for you. And with that we have reached the end of the video, I hope you enjoyed today's content and if you did, please don't forget to subscribe to the channel to join our amazing community. Furthermore, don't forget to go to r slash ripe stories on reddit to post your own stories if you want me to read them out in a video. I hope you have a fantastic day and I see you again tomorrow.